Okay, we're going to go through some uh, more terms real quick um, in the form of fill in the blanks. An element taking the place of a less active element in a compound occurs during a displacement reaction. If a chemical reaction forms a single product from more than one reactant, then the reaction is a synthesis. A substance that is used to speed up a reaction but is not used uh, to speed up in the re uh, sorry, but is not used up in the reaction is called a that's a catalyst. A single reaction breaks down into more than one product during a that's a decomposition. You can predict whether a single displacement reaction will occur by looking at a list of elements organized according to their chemical reactivity known as a or an activity series. A chemical reaction that involves the switching of ions between two compounds to form two new compounds is a double displacement. Okay, so here are the elements in the electromotive series. Um, you might want to copy these down in order. Okay, Follow the order that they come in the order that they appear and the nonmetals are in a separate category but they also have their own electromotive series so the first whole bunch were metals where hydrogen is kind of like a quote unquote metal but it's not really a metal and the nonmetals being fluorine chlorine bromine iodine so activity series so here's some questions from the activity series predict whether a reaction will occur now remember uh, to uh, you might want to go back to the activity series, and as I said, pause the video, copy down the activity series, and then see if you can predict whether reaction will occur in the following situations. Okay, so we have lithium and sodium chloride. Well, they do form lithium chloride. A reaction does take place, and that's because lithium is before sodium. Aluminum and copper nitrate. Okay, that forms aluminum nitrate. Iron and zinc chloride, they have no reaction and that's because iron is after zinc and zinc is already bound up in a compound. And as you can see here, if you just pause the video, um, here we have lithium uh, coming after, well, sodium, uh, coming after lithium. Lithium is the more active, so it's already in a compound and so no reaction. Um, so identify the reaction, balance and explain. Now in this case, you assume these reactions are taking place, but if you don't believe there is, uh, go back to the uh, activity series and see for yourself. So that's a single displacement. This one um, I think where you can see there's two pure elements uh, bonded, uh, bonding together or reacting together, that has to be a synthesis. Um, how about this one? Silver nitrate and sodium chloride. Okay, that's a double displacement. There's the balanced equation. Um, this is iron perchlorate and aluminum. What does that make? Well, first of all, it's a single displacement. Here's the balanced equation. And aluminum displaces iron. Okay, here's some more. Remember, uh, these do go ahead. Uh, and again, if you are unsure, check the electromotive series. Barium nitrate and magnesium sulfate. That's a double displacement. Balanced equation reason. Okay, um, barium chloride and sodium chromate. That's a double displacement. And here's the balanced equation. And sodium displaces barium in the activity series. And uh, what about rubidium and oxygen? 
Well, if we assume that's going ahead, then that has no choice but to actually uh, be a synthesis. And there's the balance equation. Iodine and uh, calcium bromide. And that's a single displacement where the iodine is before um, iodine will displace calcium, more active than calcium. Evidence of a reaction. Now, in the picture, notice that a prime evidence of a reaction taking place, lots of light, lots of sparks, flames, smoke, bubbles, lots of stuff going on. Lithium has been placed in water in the beaker to the right. Examine the photo and write a detailed description of the reaction taking place, including evidence of a reaction and what is likely the reaction taking place. Now I've told now that um, if you're really knowledgeable about lithium, lithium wouldn't react that much, but we'll we'll just take it for what it is and say that it's lithium. Okay, so you have um, basically. Uh, a reaction you're looking for evidence of a reaction and here is a I guess a, an answer for which if you have these main points you've written a good answer and I'll just um, go through them and you can actually see for yourself and I I won't read all this but you can read this for yourself and uh, see if you've got the main points covered in your answer um, that you got after you paused the video just before these answers came up. Okay, so, and there's the balanced equation. So here's another question. Uh, how would you classify the reaction in which zinc powder is used to recover gold from, I would call that gold cyanide or gold cyanate? Which reaction type does it most resemble? Explain. Um, this would be a single displacement reaction and that's because uh, well whatever you're trying to do you're trying to knock out the gold in order to isolate it with you know you're trying to recover the gold uh, and if it's bound to cyanide well zinc would be higher in the act much higher in the activity series and it'll knock out the gold and so and that's by that's a, a method of gold extraction called the cyanide process and um, there's the reaction there. Zinc is much higher in the activity series which whereas gold is almost non-reactive. Excuse me. More fill-ins. A blank is a compound that can release hydroxide. Okay, that's a base. The blank is a numerical scale that's used to classify aqu aqueous solutions as acidic, basic, or neutral. Okay, it's a pH scale. A blank is a substance that produces uh, hy hydrogen ions in water uh, when dissolved in water. It's an acid. A blank is composed of hydrogen and a nonmetal. That's a hydride. Or a binary acid, sorry. Hydrogen and a non-metal. Yeah, that's a binary acid. Hydrogen and a metal would be a hydride. A blank reaction is where equal amounts of acid and base produce a salt and water. So a blank reaction. That's a neutralization reaction. Okay, A blank is a substance that changes color to show the concentration of hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions in a solution. Okay, it's a pH indicator. A blank is an acid consisting of hydrogen, oxygen, and another element. Okay, that's an oxoacid. Now, identify these as acid or base. HCl. Well, clearly that's an acid, very strong one. MgOH. And that's a base. H3PO4, that's phosphoric acid, of course an acid <laughs> by going by its name. LiOH is lithium hydroxide. Okay. Ammonia. Ammonia itself is a base and it has a rather peculiar reaction with water that makes it into a a um, Lowry Bronsted base. And H four OH that's um, ammonium hydroxide and strangely enough it's a base. 
but that's actually uh, ammonia and ammonium hydroxide. If you have ammonia aqueous, well NH4OH essentially is aqueous ammonia, so they're both they both act as bases. NH4Cl, well that's ammonium chloride, and that's an acid. Okay, so a weak acid at that. Um, that's calcium hydroxide. So a base. Okay, write the chemical formula, and I'll just uh, I'll just uh, mute the microphone here while we go through them. And here are some acid and base questions. How does the acidity of a solution change as the pH rises? How does the acidity of a solution change as the pH rises? As the pH rises, of course, it's going to get more basic or less acidic. Why is it important to maintain water at a correct pH in a swimming pool? Uh, there are many, many ways you can answer that question, but a good one would be, for one thing, to reduce uh, the growth of mold, um, a stabilizer for chlorine, um, also the growth of bacteria. Bacteria would have, and mold would both have ideal pHs, and you can actually prevent the growth of both. Makes the water safe to swim in then. Uh, what effect would removing the catalytic converter from your car have on local pollution and acid rain? And as I said before, acid rain is something you might want to be familiar with. You would get an increase in acid rain. Okay, what effect would removing sulfur from coal before burning it have on acid rain? Okay. Removing sulfur decreases the occurrence of sulfur dioxide. And what's the importance of sulfur dioxide? Well, it reacts with water from the air, right? Reacts with water here. And this water comes from the atmosphere, comes from the air, to make H2SO3. And that's aqueous H2SO3. It'll fall to the earth as acid rain. This whole reaction occurs in the atmosphere. Okay, what else? Well, here are acids applied. So bacteria used in the making of fermented milk products, so cheese and yogurt are two examples of fermented milk products. Milk has a pH of 6.5, and notice cheese has 5.5 pH, and yogurt has a pH of 4.5. Use a normal um, uh, pH formula to figure out which of these foods is more acidic and by how many times more acidic is the most acidic food compared to the least acidic food. And you can make the comparison between cheese and yogurt or cheese or say, you know, cheese and milk or yogurt and milk. Okay? Yogurt is the most acidic because it has the lowest pH. And you can compare them. Remember pH, the hydrogen ion concentration is equal to 10 to the power of the minus pH. And when you take the pHs, you can actually subtract them. So here we have minus 4.5 plus 5.5. And remember, the reason that's plus 5.5 is because we're, we're subtracting a negative. So that turns that into a plus. That makes this 10 times, yogurt would be 10 times more acidic than cheese. Now, if the comparison is made with milk, then that's negative 4.5 plus 6.5, which makes yogurt 100 times more acidic than milk. And that's the end. Okay, so I hope uh, you've uh, learned a lot from this, and move on to the grade 11 review, coming right up.